Hello and welcome to this episode of Ritter's Rant. Today we're going to be talking about electronic warfare, um, but a particular kind of electronic warfare. You see, for some time now, Russia has been using drones to strike targets throughout Ukraine, and uh, these drones have been very effective. I think when the final history of the Russian-Ukrainian conflict is written, uh, the role played by in particular, the Iranian-style uh, Shahid-136 or Geranium-2 drones, uh, the role played in suppressing Ukraine's uh, air defense network and in targeting, um, you know, strategic targets throughout Ukraine. It will it will be seen that this drone uh, played a, a very decisive role. But the Ukrainians haven't sat back and just taken these attacks uh, and not doing anything. Ukraine has, from the very outset of the conflict, uh, been sort of a, a, a laboratory for electronic warfare capabilities to counter Russia's drones, uh, in particular Shahid-136 Geranium-2 uh, style drones. Um, and over the years, Ukraine has developed some very specific capabilities, most notable of which is known as Pokrova. Pokrova isn't one system or two systems. Pokrova is thousands of systems that are deployed throughout Ukraine, not just on the front line, but in particular in the depth of Ukraine. And the, the goal of Pokrova isn't just to interrupt signals. No, the ultimate goal of Pokrova is to take over control of the uh, Shahid-136 or Geranium-2 type drone to either bring it to the ground violently, crashing it, destroying it, or glide it to the ground and capture it for exploitation, or and this has been the case for at least 100 of the Shahid drones, to capture the drone completely and turn it around and fly it back into Russia. And uh, as I said, this has been done 100 times by the, uh, by the Ukrainians. Um, now, this, this opens up for any number of possibilities. Um, and you have to keep this in mind when we talk about uh, what happened yesterday uh, over the skies of Poland. You see um, over a dozen Russian drones uh, apparently flew toward Poland or entered Polish airspace. Uh, two of these drones were actively engaged by Polish air defenses and shot down. Now, the Poles are screaming bloody murder. They're saying that this was uh, evidence of a Russian attack. They're talking about Article 4 a gathering of NATO to deal with this threat from Russia. The, the Belarusian Defense Ministry has been a little bit more responsible. Um, you see, they detected these drones um, flying over Belarusian airspace. That doesn't normally happen. And heading towards Polish airspace. And they warned their Polish uh, counterparts. They said, you've got drones coming in. Um, you know, we're not controlling them. We don't know who is controlling them, but they're headed your direction. And this helped the Poles to, you know, trigger their air defense and to, you know, defend their their territory, uh, shooting down at least two of these drones. Uh, now, the Russian Defense Ministry has said, and I believe honestly, that they didn't attack Poland. Uh, they did launch over 400 uh, Shahid-136 uh, Geranium-2 style drones against targets throughout the, uh, the depth of Ukraine, including many targets in western Ukraine. Uh, but all of these targets uh, were legitimate military targets uh, inside Ukrainian uh, sovereign territory uh, that mm, under no circumstances did Russia target Poland. But something did. And so here we come back to Pokrova. And what appears to have happened is that the Ukrainian government, having mastered uh, the ability of Pokrova to take control of a Shahid-136, rather than sending it back into Russia, where it would be shot down, um, they instead sent it to Poland to simulate a Russian attack on Poland, on a NATO country, in an effort to get NATO to mobilize and come to Ukraine's assistance in the war against Russia. This is a Ukrainian provocation. This is a Ukrainian red flag. This is Ukraine seeking to thrust not just Europe, but the United States into a larger conflict with Russia, one that could easily go nuclear if not nipped in the bud. So while NATO assembles its leadership to 
uh, discuss this threat posed by Russia under Article 4 of the NATO Charter, they would be well advised to learn a little bit more about just what the heck is going on inside Ukraine. Um, I don't want to give away too much, but I will say that NATO is fully aware of what Ukraine is doing with Pokrova. NATO is fully cognizant of the fact when Ukraine takes control of a Russian drone. This is easily detected using various electronic warfare, signals, intelligence, collection capabilities, all of which NATO has in abundance in the area. NATO knows full well that Russia did not carry out an attack against Poland. NATO knows full well that Ukraine did, in fact, carry out an attack against Poland using Russian drones that it hijacked. This is a completely different narrative than the one that's being put forward in the West. And it's one that everybody should consider as we head towards the next and possibly final phase of the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. This has been my latest rant. The next time a thought crosses my mind, I'll be sure to let you know.